<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Celebrate Southern Africa. My name is Dawn Denton, and this evening I am speaking to two people because, you know, one is just not enough. And um, we are chatting to the lovely Tony and Debbie Strauger. Strauger? Strauger. Did I get Strauger. that right? Strauger. Strauger. <laughs> so tell me where the surname comes from, because that's not a surname I've stumbled across very often. It, it original, hello, um, Dawn. It, yeah, it's, hello. Um, it's originally from Germany. It's the, um, the switchboard operator, the big main switchboard. That was the, where it originates from, but we're no relation. So, oh. um, sad to say. So, oh, I, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I had um, I had my DNA t tested um, this time last year, actually. And I came out with this amazing um, DNA, like I'm a Viking, which I was really excited about. <laughs> And um, my family's from Lincolnshire, and I had no idea. And then I found I had one, just under one percent of West African. How exciting is that? <laughs> what Namibia? <laughs> no, no, further west than that. Okay. So, oh, so where where is your family from then, Tony? Because you um you moved out to South Africa, and then you've come back here. Is that right? Yeah, we uh, well, I originate from a little town called Haverhill in Suffolk which okay. is 15, 15 miles away from where we are now. Um, and in 76, when I joined in the jewelry industry, um, I was with it for six years. And then I went to Johannesburg in 82. And what made you go all the way there? I knew two people who was, who was in the jewelry industry. And um, the company I was working for was moving to Birmingham. Um, and I said, I'm not going to Birmingham. So... I said I'll go to Africa instead. And Much did, better I, option. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said I'll give it two years, and um, sixteen years later, um, we came back, wife and kids, and a lot of knowledge behind me. So. Well, do you know what? Great. In Africa, in Africa, two years actually is sixteen years. So you know, like yeah. time just moves yeah. very differently there. <laughs> yeah. Well, good times. Especially oh, I'm sure. And also the land of gold and diamonds. Did you manage to work much with the gold and the diamonds in South Africa? It, it's, I've, I've been in the jewelry industry all, all the time. Um, I worked not on the diamond side, it was more of the manufacturing and handmade work and so forth. Um, worked for probably about four or five companies while I was out there. Um, Charles Gregg was one of the main ones. Um, all high-end um, jewelry, lovely, best company I ever worked for. Is that is that why you um, why you fell in love with him, Debbie? Because he could make you some nice jewelry. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it that's wasn't. the only reason I would. I would be like, oh, you can make me jewelry. Um, yes, yes, I do, I do. <laughs> it, it took it, it took me six months to make our engagement ring. <laughs> Wow, why was that? Was it was it because you had a demanding customer? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we was actually walking around um, all different shops and sketching, you know, little ideas. I mean, I did a wax carving and got the idea and then changed it every time we come home and so forth. And yeah, so. Wow. A few Are you wearing it now? It. Yeah, a few people have actually liked it. And Tony's not replicated, but he, he's made it. Oh, very, that's gorgeous. And he's made a few people that they've come into the shop and they really like my ring. And he's made them something similar, very similar, which is fun. <laughs> well, you know, jewelry, jewelry has to, I think a lot of times when it's seen in lifestyle, then people can see how it looks and then they really like it even more. So you are the advert for it, Debbie, basically. Yes. You walk, you walk around wearing all the jewellery so people go, wow, that's amazing. I want one of those. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start doing that one day because I'm not really... <laughs> I normally so, just wear... But there's things. nowhere to go. <laughs> well, that's true. Oh, good point. Good point. That's why we're on, we're on Zoom right now. Brilliant. I love it. Um, so tell me, Debbie, what is your favourite um, kind of jewellery that Tony makes? I think all his bespoke pieces, they're so original and unique and, and he only makes one of them. 
you know, and every time, I mean, all the years, I go through all the photos and the, the images, and I can't believe the, the volume of, of pieces he's made, and they're all different, each and every one of them. So okay. each design, a different gemstone, diamonds, so he creates, and, and it's all in his head, and he just carves it, carves a wax and create it and we go from there. Yeah. So I think that's the nice side of Tony's jewelry. Everything is unique. But also my big, biggest critic as well, which is ah, great. Which is good. Yes. Because, you know, I can look at something and like if there's a color, um, certain color match, because my color scheme is not as good as what Debbie's is, okay? Well, you know, boys really struggle to dress themselves sometimes with things that match or don't match. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's the same with stones. I've, I've taken risks with certain stones with different colour metals. Um, I remember making a, a peridot and rose gold pendant for a 40th birthday, which was August. And um, the, the mother who was actually ordering it, she said, are you sure about the red gold, the rose gold? And I said, mm. yes. And she said, I'm not. And I said, well, I'll put my bottom dollar on it. If she doesn't like it, I'll take the stone out and do it in the yellow or the white. So anyway, cut a long story short, she came back after giving it to her daughter and she said she absolutely loves it. And it's that risk taking situation. Mm, exactly. Um, because I yeah. wanted her to have something which nobody else is going to have. Because you're not going to be able to walk into a shop and buy a rose gold with a peridot individual pendant being made, you know, so. Yeah. And then yeah, well, I think also, do you know, sometimes it's about putting um, the confidence in the expert as well. Do you know, like, I mean, if yeah. I go to a hairdresser and I say, I want this picture and they go, oh, that's never going to happen with your hair. You know, that's never going to happen with your yeah. texture of your hair or the volume of it or whatever. Then I, well, I just say to the hairdresser, you know what you Precisely. are good at, you know what, mm -hmm. You know, and I and I'm, I will. I just have to put my confidence in the fact that you're the expert, and I think that's quite tricky as well for some people to kind of let go of that process, yeah. but trusting you because you're the knowledgeable one. Yeah, because because yeah. I, I have got clients who actually come in and say, "This is what I'd like for a birthday present." There you go, and leave me and just walk out. Yeah, and it's totally carte blanche. That's and, amazing. That must be lovely for you to have that freedom in the creative creative process. <laughs> is but nerve wracking, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Because the thing is, if I if I you know if I do get it wrong, then I feel like I really let them down. But I haven't to be No, day, that doesn't you know, happen. So, <laughs> but it's always in the back of your mind. But you know what? It's 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 not like it's cheap material either. So you want to be sure what you're doing, you know, in yeah. the process. So you yeah. you've got to be confident. But also, it's having confidence in your own skills. And um, you know, I mean, Debbie will probably attest to the fact that you have you are creative and you're very good at what you do. You're brilliant at what you do. So just letting that go sometimes from your own perspective um, is 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 quite um, it's quite scary, really. Yeah, mm. but that's that's why a lot of my um, a lot of the pieces that I actually make for customers, I actually hand carve out of wax. So the customer can actually see the, the rough shape and, and so forth of before we go to cast. You know, because if it's wrong, all it is is wax. And it's yeah. take, taking a couple of hours of my time, but I'd rather do that than sending it. And as you say, you know, spending money on the metal and so forth, and then they don't like it. And I say, sorry, you've got to pay me. And that's not fair. No. So, you know, that's why we do so the work. So where, if, you, if you're not making a bespoke piece, where do you get your inspiration from? So how do you come up with different ideas? Do you just play around with shapes? I, I, I can sit, I could be walking down the street and I just see a shape. And I don't say anything. I just store it. And then when I go to the bench, you know, from being down at the front desk in the shop to my workbench is chalk and cheese. Because I, I can do a fag packet drawing and downstairs, I go upstairs and I've totally changed it. But I've improved it. 
you know, I've fine tuned it, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just there. It's yeah. just there. Well, you clearly, you clearly are, are aware of the world because you, you see the shapes around you and you see the inspiration around you. And other people who don't need to find that inspiration actually just shut themselves off from the world. They don't even know. They don't even notice those shapes. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. stories. It's like people who write. You know, they find a story in everything. And I mean, I sometimes sit on the tube in London and I, I try and work out who on the train is the wealthiest, who on the train is the <laughs> most annoying, who on the train, you know, like yeah. uh, making stories for people. Oh, I mean, they never know, you know, <laughs> making up all these stories about them. But um, um, Debbie, tell me about um, the stones, the different stones that Tony uses that you that you think are amazing or that stones that you didn't even know existed that he's, he's worked with. Oh, we've got so many. Um, at, well, he's got a lot of, of the topaz and they're all ethically sourced. You know, um, you can talk about the gemstones, but I mean, a lot of people just say, well, where does that stone come from? You know, we have our suppliers, which we've used for the last 15, 15 odd years, 20 years, and they're reputable people and you can only get them through them. We don't just go to a market and go and buy, you know, stones. Um, but I, I think the blue topaz is magnificent, the uh, aquamarine. Okay. The aqua is gorgeous, but the, the dark blue sapphire is magnificent. It's very hard to be able to see it. Oh, wow. That's a but, gorgeous piece. But you get different quality stones. And this, this particular one is absolutely stunning. The details of Tony can tell you, but they're gorgeous. It, it, it's a, that particular one is a cushion shape um, sapphire. It weighs about one and a half carat. Wow. Uh, and surrounded by, I think it's 13 or 14 diamonds in there, which is um, close on three quarters of a carat of diamonds. And that particular one was actually hand carved. Mm, sure. so, but I made the setting for the, the sapphire. And then I made the set, done the wax for the other piece and put it all together and so forth. So. So do yeah. you do you get the gems ready cut or do you work on them as well? No, no, I buy them all um, all cut, ready to go. Um, but going back to custom pieces, all my own pieces, I always start with the stone. I don't make an item which is going to take a size eight by six or anything. Okay. I always work with the stone first because when you look at the stone, you say, okay, are we going to have the stone going straight or we're going to have it lean into one side yeah i you know i tend to go a little bit you know um <laughs> something similar to this but, one but, i don't know if you can see this one that one's straight but it's um but i have done ones which is leaning across wow. the very hard you know but it, it's um and that's that's the way i work you know, um, always get the stones first. Yeah, work around the stone. Yeah. So yeah. they're yeah. all different shapes and sizes and depths and different qualities different as colors. well, you know, and the different colors because one blue sapphire to another, might, you know, varies in colors. Absolutely. And um, I want, you know, there's a stone that I've always loved that I know is quite a little bit rare, is the tanzanite. Is, is, oh. Can you tell, tell us a bit about that? Do you know much about it? I, I don't know a great deal about it, but obviously I come from Tanzania originally. Um, they, in Cape Town, they got the Tanzanite Foundation. Which we went which to. Which we went to at the waterfront um, and spoke to the guy and all sort of thing. And he, strangely enough, he said that they all go, come from New York. They oh. all get to New York and they have to buy back. It's as similar as the gold in from South Africa, it's mined in South Africa, but we had to buy it back in dollars. You don't mm -hmm. buy, even though you're using rand, but you had to do the conversion of the, because the dollar was the world currency. Yes, currency. it's the currency yeah. for the gold, really, yeah. 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 And um, it's, it was strange hearing that from a Tanzanite foundation. And you hear people, a couple of years ago, people were saying it's coming to the end you know, so oh, there's a shortage yeah. of tanzanites. I don't think so, personally, because it's like the mines in Australia with all the opals. Mm. 
one mine dries up, they go two yard, two miles down the road and start drilling again, and off they go, you know. Um, so it's, but it's a lovely stone. It, I love it. It's, the it's colour a, is incredible. It's beautifully yeah. vibrant, isn't it? Oh, gorgeous, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. We've got a couple of them. Right? Yeah, because you get, you know, the, your light, light blue tans and I, but the main ones the, with the um, sort of purple hue in it, yeah. When you look at it, you can see the blue, but if you tilt it, it's got like a purple hue. Stunning and expensive. expensive. Have you worked with it? Have you worked with Tanzanite? Yeah, yeah, I work with Tanzanite. No, I'm not going to say often, um, but I've done quite a few pieces. Well, over the years, um, over the 20 years. It's yeah. a fairly soft stone. Okay. It's not a stone for everyday wear, as you know, doing the gardening and that sort of thing. Uh, but you can use but, your diamonds in the garden that's fine isn't it yeah no that's fine but it, it's it, it's amazing the number of people who come in and say oh my stone is scratched um i've only had it a year i go yeah but what have you been doing no nothing just doing the dishes and <laughs> you know the garden work and also yeah okay say no more <laughs> there was a there was a story locally here with us where somebody um i think it was like 40 years ago they had lost a ring in the field and they thought they didn't think anything of it and then there's a potato farmer there or and they were tilling the land and the next thing they were like what the hell is this and they found the ring like 40 years later when you kind of decided that you know you're never going to see that ring again and then they found it uh, yeah. we've had a couple of stories like that <laughs> we've had yeah. a, we, we could write a lot of you know, a lot I, of stories, I, tell I think you should. I think you should write about, you know, the, the tales of a jeweler. <laughs> it's, and, and the secrets. Oh, what kind of secrets? Oh, I love the yeah, one. Exactly. The one was given. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> us. Nobody will know. <laughs> oh, yes. There, there was one. Um, uh, obviously, I won't mention any names or anything. <laughs> the, um, this lady came in. And she loved this particular, it was actually, a it was a tan, amethyst. It was an amethyst with diamond. I remember. 18 karat white gold. And she tried it on, it was perfect fit for her, okay? And her husband came in later, unknown to her, and bought it for her for Christmas. But he put it in a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So, <laughs> come Christmas morning, she saw the big box. And she said, if that is a, a vacuum cleaner, you can, you know, and she went off. He said, no, just open it. <laughs> so she opened it with anger and everything. And inside the vacuum cleaner, there was another box. Then it went on and on. And now she's really losing her temper. And um, cut a long story short, she actually found this ring in the bottom. And she obviously put the ring on, loved it and everything, and threw the vacuum cleaner out the door. <laughs> So she was yeah. a lovely. She was a lovely woman. Yeah. She was. Yeah. She came in and she just told us a story, but we were hysterical. It was just yeah. really wonderful. A friend of mine was on the plane and she went to the loo and dropped her ring down the toilet. Oh no! Hmm. So that was. She had to go back and sit in the dark and think about how am I going to tell my husband? She was. He was asleep next to her on the plane. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness me so what what are the like care when you have jewelry how do you care for jewelry and is it great to, you know like i get silver stuff and then there's a silver cleaner and i worry that that's going to destroy the silver no no it, it, won't. it, okay. it won't the you can buy a silver dip um yep. from you know it's got odds and that sort of thing yeah you literally dip the as long as it hasn't got any stones or the stones are glued in and that sort of thing um, right. opals don't like anything along those lines you literally just dip it in there for about 10 seconds take it out warm soapy water and you'll be fine and buff it up a little bit yeah it, and, eh? and you can buy a silver cloth same thing you just give it a wipe and it, it's fine um it's just general you know care yeah. or come in yeah. and have steam cleaned by tony and buffed and you know polished properly oh yeah that's true when it's a when it's yeah. a complicated piece or something it might be better just to go in and, and get tony to do that for sure 
Yeah, yeah. Or, or just check, you know, check the claws and everything, you know, because claws get warm, which holds the stones in. Oh, yes. You know, if it's, um, if you've had the ring maybe two, three years um, old, just bring it in. It ain't going to cost you anything. I'm just going to look at it, check it, make sure the stones are tight and all sort of thing. Everything's fine. And then you can carry on. If it needs work, we do, we sort it out. If there's, um, has there, do people sometimes come to you and say, I've got this piece from like my great grandmother and um, they think it's very valuable and then it's not? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> shame, sadly, yes. I oh, mean, no. I'm surprises. Oh, shame. Are they heartbroken? They, they are, but sometimes they flip it around and say, well, it was from my grandmother. You know, she always wore it with pride. That's right, exactly. So why can't I wear it with pride? That's right. You know, um, I've actually taken, again, some very cheap jewellery and made it into something new that used the cheap stone. So it really depends on the individual. But, um, but yeah, it's like Debbie said, it's turned the other way where people think, oh, that's not worth anything. You know, especially when family yeah. members have died. They'll come mm. in and ask me to check. I said, bring all the stuff in. Let me go through it for you. And I do. And no, that one's a diamond. No, it's a piece of paste. No, it's a diamond. Oh, really? And then you see the big smile happening, you know. Um, and then it nine times out, it turns out to be remade or mm. something like that. Oh, so, it's a big part of, yeah. of Tony's work is remodeling old jewelry, old jewelry, which is nice. It's recreating it and make it and they're keeping that sentimental piece yeah within the family. yeah no absolutely um so what is trendy at the moment because i can't are pearls are people wearing pearls a lot of people most wear. definitely yes really so, okay we got a gorgeous selection of pearls um I think it's a, a lot of women love pearls and you know they're also still so there's such a variety things. now there's such a variety of pearls mm. the, the ones we've got are all cultured they're all you know they're all genuine um but you can get your pinks you can get your blues and all sort of thing and graduated now you we've got some which are like 15 mil in diameter wow you know, they're, they're huge but you know if you swung them around and you'd knock someone out you know, um, <laughs> but it, it's, and, and with Don't earrings. try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they do come with a health warning. Um, but it, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, you know, they have different lengths. The youngsters seem to have it longer. Okay. You know, the older generation, it, it could be so different because one old lady will come in and they want a big piece. Exactly. And the next old lady will come in, she wants a, a triple triple row. Yeah. You know? And we do all restring in and all that sort of thing as well. There's no really real age barrier, really. No, you know, some no. ladies in their 60s, 70s, whatever, they prefer the bulkier, the bigger, you know, uh, the better. And others are, they like the... the, the, the very, smaller very, pieces. Yeah, the smaller dainty pieces. So it's so, everyone. Yeah, and how do you look after pearls? Is it the same? Just kind of uh, because I sometimes worry that pearls, because I've got a string of pearls that I don't know if I'm cleaning them properly. Okay, the, the, the two main things is that it's the last thing on and the first thing off. Okay. Okay, and then to it's to give them a wipe, you'd use a, a sounds a bit Irish, a dry, damp cloth. Okay, so it's not wet, wet, it's just, yeah. Yeah, and it, you just give it a light little rub on the pearls. I mean, like I say, they don't like perfume. Okay. And that's why you, so if you're wearing perfume, then don't, if, then, then if you're wearing pearls, don't put perfume up here, put perfume on your wrists rather or no, something. You can put it on, but that's, once it's on your skin, it's not as bad. But if you're spraying, oh, I see. Once yeah. you put, once you've got your pearls on, it's going to go on, and that could um, enhance the luster of the pearl, especially if it's a quality pearl. Yeah. Some pearls can cost you thousands, you know. Uh, mm. But you know, and that's why I say 
the first thing off and the last thing yeah. on. Yeah. So, but, yeah. Okay, I have to remember that when I've had a few glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> After them, in other words. <laughs> just, just leave one. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Debbie, have you always liked jewellery, or was it just when you when you met Tony that your interest was sparked in jewellery? Yeah, I, th I think um, well, I wasn't really an avid, you know, person for jewellery. I like my jewellery. I like my bangles, but I've I've had pieces that I've been wearing, you know, for forty odd years. And I, and I still wear it, but I like my earrings. I like wearing different earrings and, and bangles. Other than that, I still wear the same rings. I've got my grandmother's ring on and I still wear that. And I'm happy with that. But other than that now, with regards to the jewelry, it's just me helping Tony or, and create different pieces for, for customers. Mm. And then getting to know different customers, what they like, what they don't like, or what we think they might like, you know. Mm. Goodness me, it's understanding human psychology, not only creating, but just the human psychology of it as well. It, yeah. it, it, it's a major part. It's a major part, you know, of understanding your customers. Yeah, you know, and do you find people repeat to come and visit you as well? So they, they, they come to you regularly for another piece or for, to buy for other people? I've, I've had over the years, um, back when we was in Hayville, I had a, um, a family, that, well, the mother and the husband and wife, he used to come and give me designs. And I had to make a pendant, an earring, uh, sorry, earrings, a pendant and a ring. And in the end, we had to actually order her um, trays so she could put everything on there. And she, he said, if you've ever run short of boxes, give me a call because I've got something. <laughs> Seriously, it's, um, but I've got, yeah, I've got my regulars that they may come, you know, once every two years or something like that. If there's a, a, a big birthday, you yeah. know, Christmas normally, you know, you, you get some guys that they come back every year. The farmers. Valentine's Day. Valentine never big for us. Never big for us. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's changed. You know, very much um, so. Yeah. Yeah, youngsters now they want go online and you know buy online and all sort of thing. But if they want a unique piece, then yeah, then they are ahead of the game. But they'll look online first. I mean, hopefully we come into that picture somewhere along the line. And then they'll come in and talk to me normally just after Christmas, you know, because some of my pieces can take, you know, months to, yeah. to do. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's, but it's still, we still get business from it, but yeah, it's I'm not sure. as big as it used to be. Mm, yeah. mm. But he's been looking so, after families and generations you know generations he's he's friends from school <laughs> he's been doing uh, their children's uh, you know uh, the wedding rings and now it's their children yeah. and now it's been wow called, does uh, that make you feel like really young <laughs> uh, very very much so yeah i said the next time you come over with your next child i'll be in a zimmer frame <laughs> the great grandchildren so have yeah. you got some other pieces there that you wanted to show us what have, what else have you got near you I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I, I've got it on. Oh, what is that? That's stunning. This this is my latest piece. I only finished it on Saturday, I think. It's a it's totally handmade. Everything's handmade on there. It's a pear shaped um, sapphire with a thirteen pointer GVS diamond um, at the and, top. At the top. Yeah. With, with what is G, What is a GVS diamond? GVS, G is the colour, okay? okay, you go, D is the best, and it goes E, F, G, um, and then the VS. What happened to A, B, and C? No, they, <laughs> no, they don't, no. Well, that this doesn't work for my brain, like we start the alphabet at D, well that's okay, my name's Dawn, I'll be at the beginning of the alphabet. <laughs> right, well done. So, um, e, and then the, so the, the G, what did you say, the G, V, G, V? GVS. Okay. And the V is right. for? Don't, no idea. Okay. Okay. So G, okay. It's just, the, the v, you've got yeah. SI, 
SI is the lower quality. Okay. Then the v, VS is the next one. Then you go VVS, and then you go to internal flawless. Oh, wow. So that's like the, the top end, that top, is, top, top. Yeah, that is the bee's knees. You Would know, that you, be like in, in like the um, crown jewels? Probably, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our Cullen and Diamond. Oh, yes. yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Oh, yes, the yeah. Cullen and Diamond. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I am. Um, I am. Uh, I love I love telling people that you know that's our connection with the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also Elizabeth Taylor's ring. I think that was auctioned off just some time ago. That oh, really? Richard, yeah. Richard uh, Burton bought it for her in Botswana, I think it was. So now Botswana is 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 one of the big diamond companies. Aren't they moving back or their headquarters back to? Is it um to to Botswana? I'm not familiar I, with that. I heard, I heard that recently and I was wondering if, um, oh. yeah, I need to think of, work out who that was. Um, either that was a crazy dream. Um, so <laughs> have, you, have you got something else there that you wanted to show before we finish? You've done that one, the, the, the pearl, I mean the um, pear-shaped. It didn't go pear-shaped though. It actually came out quite well. Oh, do you want to see a garnet, garnet drink? Yes, yes, yes. This is, uh, where are we? This way. Oh, I love that. Oh, so that's, you, that's gorgeous. This is um, another wax carving of mine. And you've got a triangle, an oval, and a round garnet. And it's in nine carat white gold. Oh, and that's stunning. That is nice. I love <laughs> rings. Rings on, I love rings. I love wearing rings. But I hate the winter because I go from hot to my fingers swell, and then I go outside, and then they get all loose. Yeah. Oh, it's a pain. This, you know, trying to look good in all climates is really hard work. Uh, <laughs> oh, let me take this one. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that one. Oh, then. yes, that's lovely. I love that gap around the, 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 the you know, the space. Yes. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I yeah, know. This one, obviously, is, is my one. Um, and I've actually remade it twice now. No, no, you made it in the white gold. It was a lot the, bigger. No, three times. Sorry, three times I've remade this. The the one customer wanted a pear shaped sapphire in the top. Oh, yes. Okay, and then we put squares um, diamonds down the shoulders. That was uh, remember they um, smothered each other when they walked out the shop. I do remember. Um, <laughs> and then somebody yeah. else wanted uh, so, yeah. a bigger diamond than mine, and also diamonds down the shoulders. And then somebody bought their own diamond in, and I've remade it with her own metal and all sort of thing. So I wow. made three others, but they're all they're, they're all, all different totally though. They're all different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Exactly. So they've taken the bases from my original one. So when you work, do you like quiet or do you have music on? Um, if music is on, I don't hear it because uh, I'm, I'm in, in the, the zone. zone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm always listening for the doorbell to go. <laughs> <laughs> Customers, yay! Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you, you, you're like pushing over a, a claw or something and you think, don't, don't, don't ring and, the bell. And all of a sudden something happens. You go, oh. Oh. You know? I know it's like nobody will ring you for months and then they'll only ring you when you're live on zoom or something you know what I mean like that's <laughs> yeah. just how it will work um so tell us where we can find all your information and where we can find you on social media so that people can go and have an explore what else you've got well Don, if uh, everyone can just go and fo uh, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram and on our uh, on our website and I will be putting more on the website you know every day as I'm going along but um, mainly it's all the social media platforms. I'm very big on Google as well. So I put, a, I add a lot of things on Google just to keep the ratings up, but well, just What's for information, a lot of people like to see what we're making and you know, what yeah. tone is and what's new. And the story behind it as yeah. well. That's important. I think so, uh, very much so. I think that makes a big difference to a piece. It's that, that it has a story. Yeah, because the thing is that it's, it's 
you know, what, A, where the items are come from, what the occasion is, and then the process of the different areas where we've gone from the start to the next phase to the finished, and then people can actually see the whole scenario, you know, and once or twice, the fag packet drawing next to the mold, next to the, you know, and that hits home. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Because so it, it, then it becomes something more than just a piece. It has a story. It's had a journey. It's exactly. been in a, a process. And, and, and that's why having something made um, bespoke or unique is so different to just going online and just buying something that's just been spat out by a machine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the main, a lot of people think that having something made is crazy expensive. And it's not. You know, it's, I do, obviously we do it as a business, fair enough. But the thing is that you've got the passion, you've got the commitment yeah. behind it and the trust. You know, yeah. we, you know, when you get people dropping off one carat diamonds and just leaving them with you, you know, to sort out a job, you know, that's trust. Yeah, big time. You know, and that's all, you know, when I was in South Africa, I was running a company and I had at the time back in the mid eighties, um, it was like Huge three and a half, three and yeah. half million rands worth of goods. Which is five P. <laughs> but now it is. Now it is. Yeah. It down yeah. Here, so, sadly. <laughs> um, and you're on Instagram as well, so we can have a look at you on Instagram. Yes, you? thanks, Dawn. Yes, on on Instagram as well. Yes, try and update everybody. Keep everybody in the loop. Let them know yeah. what time it's up to. And if, I'm, if I work, I'm on the golf course. <laughs> okay, well that's all right. Creating something else, creating a good handicap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a little cricket bat he's made. He's made a, a spanner. hockey stick, a spanner. But those things mean a lot to people because they're something that they're passionate about. You know, like when I was um, when I was tour guiding, we used to go via Florence and we used to pick up a lot of jewelry in Florence. I actually had a handbag stolen when I had taken loads of pieces into the jeweler to be fixed. And the insurance company was like, why do you suddenly have three necklaces, gold necklaces and, you know, charm bracelets and all this stuff? And I was like, no, seriously, I was go going to the, the, you know, the jeweler. But we, we used to buy, as tour guides, we used to buy little little um, buses for our, you know, uh, charm yeah. bracelets or necklaces. We yes. have, you know, little worlds and things that relate to travel. You know, it was always something that was quite special to us. And I actually buy jewelry as my souvenir when I go traveling because I, I don't need to have another tea towel or a, you know what I mean, like a salt and pepper seller, but a, a piece of jewelry I can always talk about, you know, like someone yeah. says, oh, I love your ring. And you go, oh yeah, I got that in Gibraltar. It's a, it's a whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. That That's nice. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. do that. Yeah. Nice. No, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of doing that, but it's been such a pleasure to chat to you and finally meet you, Tony. <laughs> yes. And, um, and to hear about your, your process, because I think, Sure. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't never spoken to a jeweler before, so it's, it's brilliant. Thank you. And I hope you have a very good Christmas and um, I look forward to seeing more of your gorgeous stuff online because I think it's beautiful and I'm, I'm definitely popping around when I'm on your side of the country. I mean, I'm in Southwest, but you know, I'm coming to visit you. Well, we look forward to seeing you or maybe hopefully we can visit you one day. Come and visit, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look after yourself. Okay. Lovely, Thank thanks you. so much. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Well,